All right, so this is the second part of the classification lecture. Uh, we're talking about general classification, and as I mentioned in the first part, I'll have more details about what are the key features for this file or that file or this. Some things we may go down from phylum to class level, and I want you guys to know the classes certain organisms are placed into. But we'll do that in those particular chapters or those particular lectures. This one, again, just general overview. We left off talking about, starting to talk about Protista. Most scientists don't recognize it as a kingdom. It's being reorganized into these things we call supergroups. Generally, though, it's just this mixed bag of organisms. They're not plants, they're not animals, they're not fungi, they're just all the other stuff. So we're not going to can focus too heavily in this lecture on their classification, but we'll talk more about the algae, huge, huge component of the Protista group, and look at what's going on with the algae and some of these other members of that group. Okay, so our next kingdom to start looking at or talk about briefly is Kingdom Plantae. In general, plants are photosynthetic. They have cell walls with cellulose. And they're multicellular. So multicellular. They're going to have a nucleus. They're going to have chloroplasts. Those are kind of just a general plant features. So Plants are being reworked a little bit. Uh, we're not going to go too heavily in the kingdom plantae because that's not really a big player in the marine ecosystem. There's only a handful of plants, the seagrasses, and technically they're really the only ones that are marine organisms. When we get into the mangroves, they're not in the ocean, they're on the edge. They're associated with the marine environment because they're shoreline species and coastal species, but they're not actually living in the ocean itself. So plantae is not going to play a huge role in the marine ecosystem. Not downplaying it, it is an incredibly important kingdom, but we're just not going to give a lot of focus on kingdom plantae due to the nature of this particular course. So we'll touch base on it a little bit later uh, in some of the other lectures though. Okay. Kingdom Fungi. Fungi is another group that isn't a big, big player in the uh, marine world. Let me get rid of that bolt. Okay, so fungi in general. Cell wall made of polysaccharide called chitin. They are heterotrophic. They secrete digestive enzymes, break down cellulose and lignin, um, two key components of most plants. So in the marine world, there are some fungi that we'll want to explore, but again, it's just not a real, real uh, prominent group in the marine environment, so we won't focus and spend too much time on them. Now, the one that most people are looking forward to and waiting on is Kingdom Animalia. Now, in the animals, how do we know it's an animal? Multicellular. All right, that's a big feature. All animals are multicellular. Animals lack cell walls. We have cell membranes, but no cell walls. And we are heterotrophic. We eat stuff. Every animal in the marine ecosystem eats something. So there's a little picture here. That's a picture of from Belize. In that picture, you're going to have sponges. You're going to have corals. Those are both animals. And we'll talk more about those. Sponges go in phylum periphera. Corals go in phylum mandaria. And we'll get into those in more detail when we get into those particular groups. But right now, Kingdom Animalia, you got a lot of cells. You don't have a cell wall. 
and you eat things. That's the general, general classification criteria to call you an animal. But we will explore this kingdom in more detail. We're going to drop down into the phylum levels and go through a bunch of the different phylums, especially the phylums associated with the uh, marine ecosystem. So it's definitely a group we'll spend a lot more time on. It tends to be a little more, one of the more interesting groups. Yeah, and I'm biased towards animals, but we'll get into those. Uh, we'll talk about phylum arthropoda. We'll actually drop down into some classes here. In the subphylum crustacea, uh, think about all the crustaceans we're going to see. Lobsters, crabs, shrimp, copepods. There's a ton of crustaceans out there in the marine environment. And we'll do some exploring on those guys. So we want to have a little bit of the background, some familiarity with them, what they are, what they do. Uh, within that group, we'll drop into the different classes. We'll go into class... Uh, some of the different classes that will be associated with the marine environment. <clears throat> we'll get into phylum Echinodermata for sure. The echinoderms, these are all the spiny skinned organisms, our little sea urchin over there, sand dollars, sea stars, brittle stars, all those kind of organisms will be discussed during the animal information. And we will definitely get into phylum Chordata, endoskeleton, closed circulatory system. Uh, the main ones we're going to look at with Chordata will be the fish, the reptiles. Um, so we'll get into chondrichthys with the sharks and the rays. We'll talk about osteichthys, the bony fish. We'll do a little bit of reptilia because hopefully we'll come across some sea turtles while we're out there snorkeling and exploring. Um, and looking at what is the diversity there, uh, hopefully we'll get into class mammalia. Check out some of the dolphins, some of the marine mammals. Uh, manatees are a possibility. We get into reptilia. We might come across some of those crocodiles or the alligators, some of those reptiles in the marine ecosystem. Um, aves, we'll touch base a little bit with that particular group. And we'll get into some of those areas. So there's our reptiles. Um, amphibia, not that big of a diversity in the marine ecosystem. Um, but again, the AVs, we'll talk about some of those guys. And then class mammalia, what are the marine mammals we want to think about and have a little bit of association with and more familiarity with. Okay, so classification, keep it broad, keep it general, keep it basic for this lecture. And as we go through each succeeding lecture, again, we're going to get into more details about key criteria for a particular phylum or class or order, etc. But we'll be doing that in those further lectures. All right, so let's keep this short and let's move on to the next topic.